On Friday morning, Donald Trump did something familiar, he changed his mind. Upon signing his strongman executive order earlier this week addressing an immigration crisis of his own making, he pressed repeatedly for comprehensive immigration reform. Now is the best opportunity ever for Congress to change the ridiculous and obsolete laws, he tweeted. But on Friday, he abruptly reversed course, calling on lawmakers to stop wasting their time and to delay a fix until after midterms. Dems are just playing games, have no intention of doing anything to solve this decades-old problem. We can pass great legislation after the red wave, he said. The flip flop effectively hamstrung Congress and frustrated lawmakers who had been struggling to move forward on two immigration bills. I don't understand where the administration is right now on this issue, Rep. Mike Kaufman confessed to Vox.but in a metaphorical sense, it seemed a fitting finale to the White House's hopelessly scattershot approach to its family's separation policy, which involved, by the Washington Post's count, no less than 14 different narratives. The confusion in Washington is mirrored at the border where, according to a Pentagon spokesman, preparations are being made to shelter as many as 20,000 migrant children in military bases. However, as the New York Times notes, it's unclear what the shelters will be used for, exactly who will be moved there, and whether children will be held there with their parents. The traumatic impact that such a chaotic and, until now, under-scrutinized system could have on migrant children is underscored in a string of tweets by Post correspondent Kevin Seif. Some of the bureaucratic failures are remarkable, border patrol agents who forgot to note that a child crossed the border with a parent. Mothers who were never given the toll-free phone number where they can ask about their kids. U.S. officials often don't answer the toll-free number, he wrote. Much of the government's information about the child's parent, necessary for reunification, comes directly from the child. What kind of information can a toddler provide? Even Trump's so-called fix for the issue, an executive order ending the separation of children from their parents, has only sown more confusion. The order declined to address the plight of over 2,300 children already separated from their parents and traded individual detention for the right to detain parents and children together for an indefinite period. Further, its success hinges on the decision of Judge Dolly G, who has been asked to modify a 1997 court ruling known as the Flores Settlement, which holds that children must be released from detainment after 20 days. If G, who has a record of working to limit the federal detention of migrant families and criticizing the conditions in which they are held, rejects Trump's request to hold families together for more than 20 days, separations could begin again. That a relapse is just as likely as not means that one of the worst episodes of Trump's presidency is liable to drag out for weeks or months and to be exacerbated by horrific reports emerging of the plights of children taken from their parents. On Thursday, CNN published a story on a child referred to in court filings as John Doe II, who was involved in a legal motion against the federal government for unlawful and inappropriate detainment of children. Accusations from his account and from multiple others range from neglect to assault and abuse. The Office of Refugee Resettlement declined CNN's request for comment, though in a press call, officials reportedly said shelters are run by organizations that meet state licensing standards and are staffed by people who are well equipped to meet the needs of children in their care. Meanwhile a Virginia governor has ordered an investigation into abuse claims by children at an immigration detention facility after Associated Press reported allegations of abuse, including claims that they were beaten while handcuffed and stripped and strapped to chairs with bags held over their heads.
It remains to be seen whether these nightmarish accounts will significantly damage the president's party in upcoming midterm elections. But it's just possible that the twilight zone Trump seems to command will likewise insulate his allies. Scandal is Trump's speciality, and an immigration-centric scandal is as good as handing candy over to his devoted base. Moreover, it's easy to see where the president is liable to counterattack, should judge he rejects his filing, it seems a safe bet she'll find herself the subject of one of his infamous scorched earth tweets. Trump's nationalism is largely what propelled him into the Oval Office, and he has the capacity to strategically twist the stories of detained immigrants into inflammatory propaganda in the name of his coveted red wave. Remember I made that speech and I was badly criticized? Oh, it's so terrible, what he said, the president said during a rally this week, referring to the infamous speech in which he referred to Mexicans as rapists. Turned out I was 100% right, he gloated. That's why I got elected, 